Okay, in this video, we are going to look into Vital Logic Design. Now, if you're an electronic student and you write code on a microcontroller and you also design hardware circuits and you're looking for a career in electronics, you might want to look into the Vital Logic Design field. Now, there's a big demand. It's used in the railways, traffic control, aircraft, aerospace, the medical field. Now, when you're given an assignment, a problem to solve, where you're going to use a microcontroller and hardware circuits, you sit down and you write your code and you design your circuit, but there's one more feature you have to incorporate in Vital Logic Design. It has to be fail safe. So if any circuit fails in your project, it has to fail safe. So in this video, we're going to look at some Vital Logic Design circuits. Okay, here's a typical circuit of a microcontroller turning on and off a relay. So here's our relay, and here's our GPIO pin of a microcontroller and this circuitry is inside the microcontroller. So we have a totem pole output, we have two FETs and total pole configuration. So if we want to turn on the relay, we apply 5 volts to the GPIO pin, so our, our code will apply 5 volts to the GPIO pin by turning on the top FET of the totem pole and we'll have current from VCC flowing through the FET into the base of the transistor. So we have a small current through the base emitter which gives a larger current through the collector emitter which will turn on the relay, energize the relay. Now to turn it off, we apply a low to the top FET and a high to the bottom FET, so now we're grounding the GPIO pin, which will turn off the base drive to the transistor. And the transistor will turn off, and the freewheeling diode will clamp the back EMF. So now we have a problem. We have a lightning strike or a power surge, and our top totem pole FET inside our microcontroller shorts out. So now we have a short between uh, the VCC and the GPIO pin. So that's going to drive our relay on all the time. And say our relay is driving a saw. So now we have no control of our saw. Our code cannot control the relay anymore because our, our totem pole FET has been shorted. Also if we have a short on our transistor, our driving transistor NPN 2N2222, if we have a short between the collector and emitter, they will force the relay on constantly we won't have no control by the microcontroller or if we have a PC board run close to the base of the transistor and we get uh, moisture into the board and we get corrosion between the the run and the base input we could have current flowing into the base turning on the transistor also the same thing could happen at the collector if we have a PC uh, ground running near the collector and we get moisture on the board and we get corrosion and we get a ground uh, on, on our collector it'll turn on the relay. So we're going to redesign this circuit using vital logic design so any failure it will fail safe. Okay here's the same circuit using vital logic design. Now this is a very simplified circuit I'm just trying to get the concept across. So you can see our GPIO pin of the microcontroller is feeding the primary of a, of a transformer and the secondary of the transformer is feeding a bridge rectifier which is driving the relay. Now to turn on the relay, we send a pulse train to the GPIO pin, say 1 kilohertz, and that will send a varying magnetic field into the primary of the transformer, and we'll get an AC output on the secondary, which will be rectified by the bridge rectifier, and we'll get a DC output, which will drive the relay. Now to shut off the relay, we just uh, turn off the, the 1 kilohertz drive to the GPIO, and it can either be low or high, and it'll turn off the relay. Now if we get a power surge or a lightning strike, and say we are, our, our top totem pole FET shorts out, we're going to have 5 volts at a GPIO pin, but it won't be varying, so we won't get any output of our secondary. If we get a break in our primary, we won't get any output on our secondary, or a short across our primary, we won't get any output. Also in the secondary, if we get an open or a short, we won't get any drive to our bridge rectifier. We have a capacitor in series with our line here, so any DC component trying to get in to the bridge rectifier will not will not uh, uh, affect the relay. And if any of the diodes open or short, we won't get enough drive to drive the relay. So any failure that that's happens in the circuit, it's fail safe, the relay will not come on, won't, won't drive our saw, so this is a vital logic design. Now normally when we use a relay in a circuit, it's always de-energized, and if we want to control a device, we energize it by activating the coil, we feed power to the coil and it pulls down the armature like that. Now we have a connection between the two bottom contacts to turn on our, our device. But in a vital circuit we use reverse logic so our, our relay is always energized 
and if there's any failure of the relay or any circuit, it'll de-energize and we'll use the top two contacts to turn on our safety device. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of a vital logic circuit. Now this circuit actually controls a railway crossing. It drops the gates and rings the bell and flashes the lights. So all this circuit does is turn on or off a relay, but it does it in a fail-safe manner. So if you see at the very input, labeled N and P, there's an AC signal generated across N and P, which is fed across a potentiometer R1, and so it's variable, we could adjust that. Now that AC signal is fed up to Q3, which is amplified, and Q3 is a tuned circuit. You can see C1 and the primary of L1 is a tuned circuit. Also Q2 also has a, a capacitor across the primary. So these two amplification stages will only amplify uh, that frequency. It's like a bandpass filter. Now Q1 is the last stage and you can see on Q1 there's 10 volts AC in the collector and there'll be 20 volts AC across the secondary which is feeding a bridge rectifier and that will rectify that signal into DC and which will drive the relay which is connected to A and B. It's labeled A and B. So the relay is energized when no train is coming. So it's reverse logic. Now when a train comes it shorts out the input, it shorts out the AC input and of course we lose drive to the four diodes, the AC to the four diodes and the relay drops out which drops the gates, brings the gates down. Now if any component in this circuit fails, the relay will drop out and drop the gates down so it will be a fail safe system. So the AC signal that's coming in from the pot goes to Q3, so it's amplified by Q3 and it goes through a transformer and you can see Q2 is inside two transformers so it's, it's totally isolated from the whole circuit so no DC could get into any of the other circuit if there's any failure of any of the amplification stages. Same as Q1. So with the three amplification stages and we got the, the three transformers it totally isolates all the, all the circuitry uh, from the last stage and any component that fails will bring down the gates and flash the lights and ring the bell. Okay so that was my little tutorial on vital logic design. Now the circuits I have shown are very simple. They can get quite complex. You can imagine a circuit in a pacemaker or a defibrillator or a control system in a fighter jet. There are also vital logic rules for microcontrollers for coding. So if you like design, circuit design, and you're good at it, and you could look at your design and do what-if scenarios to make it fail safe, you might want to consider a career in vital logic design.